Maggie Woodley from Red Ted Art and Life at the Zoo and welcome to the Science Hangout. Today at the Science Hangout we wanted to talk about all things that grow. Um, it's just a really nice time of year, spring, things are happening, things are changing and we just thought it would be a fun, fun sort of theme to explore in this Hangout. Um, just very quickly, why science at home or how do you do science at home? I mean this is all about simple ideas that you can do which are fun and easy. Um, you don't always have to have all the answers for the kids. It's about questions, exploration, uh, exploration, or just about, wow, isn't nature amazing? Um, so really, it's, it's just about having a go with your kids and exploring together. And I, I'm going first and then handing over to my um, blogging colleagues who will introduce themselves and share their activity. Um, mine first is very simple, sort of the, the whole thing about growing things. Um, I know this is sort of a little bit of a craft as well, but these are our grass heads and uh, they kind of look fun because they grow really quickly and once you've got really bushy hair you can um, cut its hair or you can um, you know hairstyle it and that sort of stuff. When we grow with my kids I like to talk to them about the elements that you need for a healthy plant. So we talk about the sun, we talk about water, um, we talk about the earth and we talk about the air. So the other day for example um, my son spent ages sitting next to his, the, the seedlings singing to them to give them more carbon dioxide which I thought was very sweet um, and it's just a really good sort of simple way to teach them about nurturing things as well and if you can see here on this one how the, the grass is actually pointing in this direction so my grass head has been facing the sun like this so you can again talk about the effects of the sun and how the plants move towards the sun um, similarly I have this very simple propagator which kind of lets you talk to the children about how you can intensify the effects of the sun um, you know how you again the moisture and how you sort of can help the growth and again with these plants um, I'm not sure if you can tell but again all the leaves are pointing in one direction so the sun's been coming like this and the plants leaning towards the sunshine trying to catch as much of that energy as possible so that's our very simple growing uh, fun with kids. Um, I'm going to pass, pass over to Ali now and she'll tell you a little bit more. Hi, well I guess mine's pretty similar in a way to Maggie's um, in as much as we are doing a press experiment so um, I'll just tip my monitor down so you can see. So what we're doing here is we've got um, three plates with kitchen roll. One um, will have uh, will be watered and in the sunshine. One will be dry and in the sunshine, and the other will be watered but in the dark in a cupboard. So you can see we haven't got much action yet, but you can see here. I don't know whether you can. Some tiny little seedlings are starting to come through. So basically. As with Maggie's, um, it's uh, talking about what plants need to grow and um, ultimately <laughs> I think you'll find that the one with the sunshine and the water is the one that's going to be green and growing and I think inevitably the one that's in the dark but has water will grow but it will grow yellow because it needs the sunshine to, to feed itself. Um, and uh, in the uh, spirit of Blue Peter, Here's some we made earlier. <laughs> Handing over to Anthea now. Hi, I'm Anthea from um, Blue Bear Wood and um, I've been talking with my girls more about the kind of the, 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 the detail of, of growth. So we've talked um, a lot about cells and how living things have cells. You have animal cells and plant cells at a very high level. I think I mentioned in a, a previous hangout that one of the nice things about kids is you can introduce kind of complicated concepts and words and that they absorb it and then um, it stays in the back of their head and the more that you talk about it the more that the kind of understanding comes and what we've done is we've kind of taken growth onto another stage and we've started talking about um, non-living things and how they grow through absorption and crystallization and um, we've been playing with a, a couple of very simple things um, one a lot of you will have heard of which are aqua beads and, and these are great and the young kids can do these and it's very tactile in that you take these tiny little um, beads, put them in some water overnight and in the morning you get these fantastic big spherical jelly-like blobs 
um, which are incredibly tactile, and you can you can choose which words you want to do that the water has absorbed them, that there's expansion going on, and depending on the age of your kids, you can kind of bring in um, more complicated or less complicated words. The other nice thing about them is if you put them in a grip seal bag, you actually get them forming um, a crystalline structure. So for kind of older skids, skids excuse me, kids at secondary school, um, this could be good. And the other fantastic thing that we've been playing with, which I don't know if you can see particularly well, is we have been making what are called chemical gardens. You can buy all these chemicals um, online, but you basically take a sodium silicate solution and by adding things like copper sulfate in very quickly what you get is that the crystal will start to precipitate out and grow um, a different crystalline structure which gives you these wonderful um, almost like underwater sea worlds um, that the kids can kind of get to see. Good to keep a lid on because that means that um, nothing um, nasty can kind of happen um, but our blog what the chemicals are and what you can use but my, my girls think this is fascinating because it kind of unfolds in front of their eyes quite quickly and then keeps growing um, the more space that you've got and I'm now going to pass over to Keris. Hi I'm Keris from Rainy Day Mum um, I also blog at Nature and Play and Growing Green Fingered Kids all about growth. We've got a very simple science experiment that we've been doing on our windowsill which if I just hold up the jar you can see we've got some runner beans growing in a glass jar. So simple to set up and unlike when children grow seeds in a um, the grass head or the crest seeds, with this sort of experiment you're able to see all the root structures start to form and then as the plant grows you'll also see the shoot head up from the top as well. Um, we've done that on the windowsill and I've blogged about that today so you can pop over and see how to do that. And we're also keeping a nature journal. And this is my three-year-old's nature journal. And he's been blogging about all the observations of growth and the changing seasons and what's going on. So we've got our first one here, which is our frog spawn. So that's the first thing that we're observing growth in on our dining room table. Uh, I'm going to hand over to Tricia. Hi, I'm Trisha from Inspiration Laboratories, <clears throat> and I'm just going to show you a little bit about um, what we call scallions or green onions, or I think in the UK you call them spring onions. Um, what we did with our little project, they're actually growing in our windowsill in our kitchen, and you can cut the tops off of them and reuse them. They'll just keep growing, and you just keep reusing the green onions over and over again. But it's fun to watch the growth process of it. So if you cut them, you can measure them the height, and then a few days later, come back and measure them again, and you'll see they're taller. You'll also get new little shoots every once in a while, like this one. And you can also see how some of the older shoots dry out and get old. And this one I pulled out. You can grow them in water, but our water tended to get kind of yucky and dirty, so we actually put them in dirt, and they seem to be doing a lot better. Um, you can actually see how long the roots are getting. Normally when you buy them from the store, they're, the roots are all chopped off, so you can even pull them out and look at the roots and how long they are if you want to. Um, but just a simple way to observe growth and even the regeneration of plants, because it's um, similar to a, a grass, how you mow the grass, and then um, it can grow and keep growing, and you just keep cutting it. That's all for me. Maggie, we can't hear you. Sorry, you know, classic hangout mistake, rookie mistake, turn the microphone on. <laughs> I just wanted to say I love the, um, again, as always, I love the, the things you've shared, and I love the thriftiness of the spring onion in particular. Before we go away, I just wanted to share this very, very quickly. I know it's really obvious to us adults about how you've got rings on a tree. We went to the park the other day, and there was a huge, huge, huge tree, and it just made me think, oh, actually, do the kids actually know how you tell the age of a tree? So there's little things that to us are really obvious that the kids just don't know. So take the opportunity to talk to them about it. So we, we basically looked at a thin tree, a medium-sized tree, and a big tree, and we discussed how old they all were. And I said how um, as the tree grows, you get these different rings on year on year, and that you can roughly estimate an age just by its girth. Obviously, not totally, because if it's a good year, the ring will be wider. If it's a narrow year, a, a bad year, like a, a drought year, the rings will be um, narrower. So you can't actually tell the age until you cut the tree across. But it still gives you an idea just looking at the tree trunk. And then finally, um, I just wanted to share 
uh, Keris, who talked about her tadpole diary, um, she did a fantastic hangout uh, about nature, and in it she talked about how you keep tadpoles and how you keep them alive at home. So I went out and followed her instructions, and I just wanted to sh show you our little tadpoles. They've just started to hatch. You can see two of them there feeding. That big black blob is two of them sitting on an egg uh, feeding. I think you can see a little bit of movement already. So these are four days old, and it's been really exciting to come back to them every four day, every day, and seeing what's happening. Um, do look at Ferris's uh, blog post to see how you look after them. Because interestingly, I've been posting the progress on the web, and so many people said to me, oh, yes, we used to do that, but you know what? Our, our um, tadpoles used to die, or we never quite managed to get a fully grown frog. So there's, there's reasons for that, and Keris tells us how to avoid killing the poor frogs, um, or toads in our case. So anyway, so that, that's our science hangout this week about growth. Um, thank you so much for everyone who joined in today and shared their activities. Thank you for coming to watch, and hopefully we'll see you again soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.